This is my new poem, Our Nation Stop Rhyming. And it's about the things that I saw when I was on tour, moving around the country a few months ago, taking place in this country and in this world, probably. And uh, I didn't know where to begin, but I wanted to begin with something special to me, and that is this pair of school shoes. This is my grandson's first pair of school shoes. And these, to me, not only represent love, but they represent hope. And that's what I wanted to begin this poem with. I wanted to begin it on a note of hope. Our nation stopped rhyming. As I toured this divided, fractured, frightened nation, I saw so much anger and aggravation. I saw so much fear and segregation. I saw compartmentalisation, right, on a scale I've never seen. A scale there's never been, a scale without any limitation. I witnessed first and the diverse effects, good and bad, because it's both of large-scale mass immigration, and I came face to face with the cruel damnation of privation and the scourge, the absolute scourge in the 21st century of starvation, being rammed down the throats of and force-fed against the will to huge swathes of the population, almost without regulation, to the point that this aberration has taken hold of and is choking our nation, causing the evaporation of people's aspiration and hope. I saw once thriving, buzzing, busy body town centres and places, now without people or faces, empty, dead, with no life or energy, just a low down, downbeat, people staring at their feet, scratching and scrounging round, looking for money behind the cushions of the sofas, chairs and seats, people just rolling over and admitting defeat, surrendered kind of vibration. I walked the winter cities where stagnation and deprivation had sent an invitation to freezing cold homelessness and desperation and I saw the bones, the laid bare bones of working class culture being picked clean by globalist vultures and I realised in that moment for all its brainwashing indoctrination and all its shiny consumer friendly presentation that globalism was our enemy, the real enemy of you and me. And it's not all that it's made out to be. And down here on earth, it's certainly not heaven sent, but hell bent on my classes and my culture's eradication as it oversees the continuation of its process of the gentrification of working class homes and working class lands. Our lives are now built on their shifting sands. The chances and opportunities for young people to own their own homes that could count on one hand. As those dark people and forces from above who've shown us no love from the Battle of the Somme and then on to 911, from the lies of Iraq to their hell and back. They couldn't give jack about us, the masses, the ordinary lads and lasses, as they create an impossible situation for a whole new generation who, in the words of the unelected World Economic Forum's own website, will own nothing and be happy. As I moved around this brow-beaten, battered nation, I saw the annihilation of our soul's collective positive anticipation. My heart felt, saw, the lean, mean corporate machine's orchestration of a massive shift and transformation towards becoming a spiteful, selfish nation that offers no real legislation to protect the vulnerable and the lowly and those who just want to live or move around slowly from the constant exploitation by those at the top who just never stop faking and taking and making and forsaking us, the masses, the ordinary lads and lasses. Do you want to know what it is? I never thought I'd see a day in this green and pleasant land where the government made moves to get protest banned and where protestation and demonstration by the poor and the not-so-sure was greeted by cheering, sneering, looking down their noses at online beration and laughed at, yeah, laughed at by the mighty, rich and strong and those who belong and met with yet even more creation of hardship for the meek and weak and those who seek mere acceptance and just some crumbs of comfort and appreciation instead of more contempt and misappropriation of our power and our wealth and now our health which has been taken, stolen by stealth. I saw that unending trials and tribulation and now blatant experimentation means that there's no rest or relaxation or feelings of elation, much less joy or jubilation, just more sadness and badness and madness and heartbroken indignation at the fact that we can all see their normalisation of the degradation without deviation of us, the masses, the ordinary lads and lasses, 
who without cessation or any explanation face more and more discrimination and victimisation by a political establishment and beyond. The so-called left, <laughs> but they're not left. And the piss poor right. But it makes no difference because the both bought off, paid off, globally shite who offer us no real representation and who between you and me I can see as seriously into masturbation because they spoon feed us their lies and their untruths and their half-truths, and no truths at all, and talk cheap and small, it's a fucking nightmare, and a negative sensation. It's a crime, for which the guilty do no time, or pay any kind of reparation, or undertake any kind of rehabilitation, it's a crime, that all the time, they neglect us, the masses, the ordinary lads and lasses. They neglect our hope, they neglect our need. They neglect the fact that we bleed in this nation. They neglect our cries and our pleas and our lamentation. They show us no consideration or veneration or kindness, no. They just show us their blindness and turn a blind eye on us too. And this kills me saying this because we are such a proud people in this nation. But it has to be said. They turn a blind eye on us to our pathetic. Because that's what it is. Pathetic. How did we even get here? They turn a blind eye on us to our pathetic, helpless, because we allowed it, that's why. They turn a blind eye on us to our pathetic, helpless situation. As I toured around this aching, breaking, socially distant nation, I saw the beginning of the end of real live human contact and communication. I saw banks and supermarkets are now filled with rows and rows and rows of those self-service tills all put there and designed to further kill human connection and consultation. I had my eyes open to the fact that we've been engineered almost not to interact physically with each other, you know, talking to a stranger at a bus stop, millions of people working from home alone, having screens up in bars and cafes and restaurants two years after lockdown's finished. Phoning up your mobile phone service provider and getting a, an automated message that tells you they can understand full sentences now. Being advised to wear masks around your family and friends just because you've got a cold. Fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers texting each other when they're in different rooms of the same home. And I saw that we live in a country, no a world where every nation's flag is being furled, curled up and put away because our governments are told what to do and say. I mean, listen, they always have been for years and years, but now it's openly on display as they take their orders from those dark people and forces from above who simply have no love for us, the masses, the ordinary lads and lasses. They despise us in every form, shape and way. I mean, I'd even go as far to say that Nation states and democracy and self-determination are done. They're dead. They've had their day. Because I saw that we lived in a world, no, a nation, where every single denomination of sovereign human being and their relation is under attack. It doesn't matter what you are or who you are, if you're white or you're black, we are all, all of us, having to endure the effects of modern-day slavery and domination. We're being oppressed and suppressed. And our lives are being compressed, we're being ignored by, and if I was being honest, we're being bored by our paid off blah, blah, blah puppet politicians who flirt like whores around the unelected World Economic Forum's cause. Hey, you love, just lift up your skirt and drop your drawers. Oh, Sunak, Starmer, Macron, Merkel, Ardern, Trudeau, Biden. Hey, Joe, what's your son in his laptop hiding? Get your pants on your ankles and keep your feet on the floor, then all bend over and boom, take some more. I can't believe that so many people can't see the score. I can't believe that they can't see our so-called leaders every unpunished, corrupted fornication with every fat cat company and corporation, with global big business, global big tech, big pharma, and now, now the World Health Organization. Because it's there on view. They parade it, they flaunt it round in front of me and you, and all it really serves to do is fuel, feed more anger and frustration. For we are the many, not them. They are the few. And yet the few own us all. They stop us standing straight and walking tall. They've got us firmly by the balls when it's they who deserve castration and castigation 
and all the branding, finger-pointing, cancelled culture stigmatisation for all their greed and the stolen profits of the privatisation and the wasteful flouting dissipation and back-slapping nomination of further pay rises and bonuses that line their pockets and fill their purses whilst all our postmen and all our nurses try to make ends meet, spending all day working on their feet, living on food bank wages below the rate of inflation. Yeah, and while the rest of us struggle to pay for simple stuff like butter and we stammer and we stutter in disbelief because we can't get no cheap relief as we can't afford to fill up at the fucking petrol station. Our homeless can't get accommodation. Our small businesses are going into liquidation. Our sick can't get medication. Our old can't get an operation. Our children can't get a doctor's appointment for an examination. People living with pain and untreated inflammation day on day. And what? What? In a once proud nation defiant that stood alone in the name of peace and love against Adolf Hitler's Nazi giant, do we say in this nation? We churn out the same old, nothing to do with me. I can't do anything. Pass the book. Procrastination. I get it. I really get it. That so many people are frightened. And over the last three years, that fear has been heightened. And while people care, they just don't dare stand up or speak out in case they lose the job. Or they get attacked online. Or they get smeared into silence. So that noose gets tightened. But shall I tell you something? Because I won't lie. Cross my heart and hope to die. I'll tell you straight. I'll state my case. I might speak my mind, but I'm afraid. Because I'm nothing special. I'm just a working men's club comedian that's never made, really made the grade. And yes, I've had some comedic validation. But I've had more comedic marginalisation. And I'm going under financially. Because of my comedic cancellation. But still I try. I still try. And do you want to know why I try? Well, I'll tell you why I try. I try because I've got six grandchildren and I want to be able to look in the eye. Because I want to give them some hope. So that when they're big people like mummy and daddy, they can afford half a dozen eggs and a fucking bar of soap. That's why. So if like me, you don't like what you see taking place in this nation but you're scared of some retaliation from those dark people and forces from above who simply have no love for us, the masses, the ordinary lads and lasses, then just take a breath full and big and try and dig deep. Force yourself to take a peep, because trust me, when you have a look, then like me, on behalf of your children, you'll no longer want to pass the book because you won't be able to stop yourself from crying when you see so many... Healthy people for no apparent reason just dropping down dead with heart attacks and strokes and blood clots and atrial fibrillation. When you see so many people suffering and dying. When you see our heatless, lightless, Christmas presentless, TV-less, birthday presentless, lifeless children who can now only dream of a sunny day at the seaside with a lemon ice cream. For them, not even a cheap holiday in Scarborough. Or a short vacation. No happy memories made or real recreation. All they've got to look forward to is more school holiday hunger and being lined up younger and younger and younger for an untested vaccination that's been proven to kill. It doesn't stop you getting ill. And in the words of those shizers, you know them better as Pfizer to the European Parliament. It doesn't even stop transmission or contamination. Well, well, well. Fucking hell. Just blatant lies and more money-making coercion and fabrication. The bastards they are. All our children, our kids, Bens, Sprogs and Bin Lids have to look forward to these days is more disassociation, hypnotisation, even zombification through spent lives wasted scrolling on a mobile phone and trying to work out ways how to break free from the chains of the student loans before they retire at 68, of course. And being monitored 24-7 by airborne drones. And soon, and this is no exaggeration, being watched to see if they leave the designation of one of their towns or homes, 15-minute neighbourhood zones, and not being able to move around without scrutinisation. Is this what you want for your children? This is what happened in 1930s Germany. People having to show the papers and the documentation. Only, only now, they're going to have to carry digital identification. 
and watch the mums and dads' lives be destroyed, not employed by the job's termination. Lives and jobs and all hope lost is now an acceptable cost to pay, apparently, as we're replaced by mechanisation. AI, getting rid of you and I. Our neighbours encouraged to watch and spy. Inside I die. As automation and Big Brother are about to rule OK, and what do you say, conspiracy theorist? Where's your tin foil at? I've never seen any of that on the mainstream news. Anyway, enough of all that. What do you think about my false eyelashes and my fake tan, my false veneers on my teeth got undone in Turkey and my fake Balenciaga shoes? And yeah, I know the government's corruption's as bold as brass, but I don't really care. I mean, they're not that bad. They've just given us a £67 rebate off the electric and gas, and because of that, guess what? My electricity bill now is only £1,655 a quarter. Aye, and I've worked it out. If I go to the leisure centre at night and the time it just right, I can sit there for hours and keep warm in the sauna with my daughter. Oh, are you calling a sacrificial lamb to the slaughter? Call yourself a comedian? I don't think that's very funny. Anyway, I can't pay me bill because I haven't got any money. And even if I did, it would be still too hard because these days there's no cash, is there? I mean, did you know there are seven constituencies in this country without a bank? And they won't let you pay with money. You can only use your mobile phone or a card. And I mean, this new digital currency thing that they're bringing in, they say that's the way forward and gone are the days when cash was king. And I mean, I don't really want it because I've heard it's such a controlling thing. But what can I do? I can't do a thing. Well, yes, you can. You can just say no. Stop being so compliant. Use money, fight back and try and win. I mean, I don't know. As around this nation, I went roaming. I had working class people moaning and groaning about strikes disrupting their comfortable lives as they sat watching Britain's Got Talent on the credit bought sofa from DFS rather than do anything about the fact that we're in a great big mess in this less for more nation. Yes, we've had strike after strike and you can say what you like. But why can't you see that these people on strike are like you and me? They're just working class people who are fighting for us all, for what we need what we want to be. They're an absolute inspiration because they're standing up to the bully, those forces of globalisation who are desperate for the allocation of full slave labour or even no human labour. So get up off that credit bought sofa and rattle your sabre because these criminals from above who've shown us no love from the horror of the Somme to the Hiroshima bomb need to be fought and beat in every skirmish, battle and altercation. Honest to God, as I travelled around this battle-scarred, wounded nation, and this is no sweeping statement or generalisation, but I was forever having the same conversation with people and strangers about the pitfalls and dangers of the unceasing restrictions and sanitisation of our expression and speech and the words that we teach, preach, each one feeling the same slow burning cremation of our freedom. And our hope. I saw ordinary people that had dull lives with no sparkle, unlike those two media distractions known as Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Just unknown people with no fortune or fame to their name, with no platform or fans or adulation, but who use dark racist words like coon or nigger attract far bigger attention and condemnation than Qatar and their royal family for denying slaves, black people of colour, their liberation. And yet these progressives who try to shame you and me into taking the knee, into taking responsibility for a slavery that happened 300 years ago in our history that had nothing to do with you and me, the same progressives who constantly spout and shout and tout the race cards said nout about the fact that 6,500 slaves went to their graves in Qatari incarceration, and nor did they even mention thousands more that couldn't get hospitalisation as they built the stadia, in which we saw the pundits at the side of the pitch with the paid for smiles and cheers, but none for them wearing any cheap Turkish veneers, nor were they wearing an armband in solidarity for all of Qatar's illegal gays and queers, nor because that would have armed their precious careers. One of them, bless him, said he was only there to report, not support, what a money-grabbing fraud whose participation showed him up as being guilty by association and showed him up for being nothing more than a lightweight virtue signalling, but rich, rich. Fucking imitation. It's funny. Well, it isn't. 
But do you know what I mean? It's funny that all their morals and principles came second to the money that they took from the now not so beautiful game. They should all hang their two-faced, hypocritical, misogynistic, homophobic, racist heads in blood-soaked shame. As I drove around this rip-off almost two pound a litre for diesel nation, time and again I heard the same concerned narration from anxious people all agreeing that they couldn't believe what they were seeing with the mind games and the gaslighting assault from those above who'd convinced the ignorant to start screaming and shouting, You're to blame, it's all your fault! and ridiculing our fixation with and our yearning for and our glorification of an almost now forgotten bygone time when our nation flowed and our nation rhymed and we didn't have the new normal version filled with discord and aversion to the old normal, our normal, the normal normal, the normal we know and love. Oh Lord, in heaven above, Please hear my prayer. And I'm sorry, Lord, because I know I swear, but I'm fucking sick, mate, <laughs> because I fucking care. I'm sick of all the exasperation I feel. I'm sick of being kept down at heel. I'm sick of a system that stopped us living, that's take, take, take and never giving. I'm sick of all the denigration and I'm sick of a nation that's so unforgiving. Now I know that me writing this probably won't get me a knighthood. It probably won't even get me another gig, but I don't care. Because things have to be said, don't they? So I hope this poem is publication about the things I've seen around this nation will highlight the breakdown and the fermentation of that old normal, our normal, the normal normal that we want to see returning, but hopes of that at the moment look smashed and burning because in 2020, when they had us all banging our pots and pans and clapping our hands like nodding donkeys and performing seals at eight o'clock after our evening meals, we all just stood idly by and watched the implementation of their fourth industrial, almost biblical, never mind revolution, but revelation. And at the same time, this kind of futuristic Hunger Games disfiguration where the majority now have no choice and the small and the silent have no voice, where farmers are being stopped from farming the earth, where we're being encouraged to eat bugs and slugs and now men can give birth and go through the pain of their menstruation. Though I'm a man and I've never had one, so what did I miss? I mean, sometimes I feel like a woman. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm cis. Perhaps I should just identify as an old crusty dinosaur that hasn't a clue, or perhaps somebody's just taking the piss. I mean, I'm just a working-class bloke with no axe to grind. I don't care how anybody identifies or what anyone is. You're an adult, be what you want. But in schools, just don't subject my five-year-old grandchildren to this confused identification. You see, as I moved around, the majority of people I found don't give a flying fuck about the issue of trans. I'm talking about people, not white Ford Transit vans. See, like, we, the masses, the ordinary lads and lasses, are more bothered about feeding our kids and having a job than worrying about a tiny, tiny, tiny minority's pronouns or a woman having balls and a knob who just wants to live their life without getting a bigoted smack in the gob or facing any kind of penalisation. In this nation, I heard a story about a scientific investigation where a pig's embryo was injected with human cells. I mean, come on, doesn't that ring any alarms or bells? And then this hybrid was implanted way down deep inside the belly of a female sheep to grow human organs for who knows what. Some scientist's perverse exhilaration, it matters not, because Matt Hancock and Chris Whitty and Dr Anthony Fauci and Michelle Mornay and the CDC and Big Pharma and the World, he World, World Health Organisation all stood there with their hand out saying, give us all your money, just give us what you got or make us a sizable back-handed donation. I saw that we've now got the capability of growing babies outside the womb 
and sad, lonely, depressed people with mental health problems are being offered more doom and gloom by being invited to kill themselves with government-backed assisted suicide and euthanization. I mean, fuck me. This is what took place in the 1930s Nazi German nation. It's such a soulless, godless abomination. And yet this violation of Mother Nature. Yeah, Mother. A woman. The feminine. I've said it with all the nervous expectation of being attacked or abused or trolled online or facing more excommunication, but fuck it. Mother Nature's violation is now being offered as our salvation and as something that's good and wholesome and that should be welcomed by more pan-slapping, happy-clapping, grateful celebration. For fuck's sake, just wake up to the fact that this is all a vile, which is an anagram of evil, unholy act and hallucination, conjured by these demons with all their squeaky clean, beautiful, caring, sharing on the outside, but hideous and grotesque and malevolent and ugly and dark underneath. Corporate demonization. O oh Lord, lead us not into this temptation and deliver us from our weak leaders who view us as being nothing more than expendable, useless, cannon fodder, farting cattle, fucking breeders and feeders who receive their scripted build back better dictation, not from us, the electorate, the people who vote in this nation, but from these globalist gangsters and their corporate bitches who revel in the power bought with their riches. They're all dance round a cauldron full of misery as they cast their transferal of wealth spells like a coven full of witches, snitches like Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates and all of their unelected World Economic Forum billionaire Davos crew mates who want our demoralisation and total control. They don't want us to have freedom. Freedom today, that's so rock and roll. If only we could invite the second coming of Jesus Christ or Elvis Presley or Jimi Hendrix to the party, they'd save our soul. Because these trillionaires and billionaires have only one goal and that's our complete and utter subjugation and confiscation of our human rights. So it's time to develop a backbone and fight back to peacefully attack without hesitation because it's time. It's time to find the courage and strength Go to almost any length, because it's time. It's time for that trickle to run down the mountainside and become an unstoppable rising tide, a compassionate sea of humanity, all swirling and rising, but not flash or surprising, just no more blind acquiescence or our compromising, because it's time. It's time to stop listening to their bullshit words and all their hollow promises of arbitration, and it's time to stop that Bond villain like Klaus Schwab and all of his infiltration. And it's time to rise and we don't need their fucking authorization because it's time. Time to unite the black and the white, the left and the right. It's time for us, the masses, the ordinary lads and lasses, to simply put stop putting up with this globalist shite, along with all of its bullying and corruption and intimidation because it's time. Because our children deserve so much more than that hollow mantra of building back better. They need their lives and their futures protecting right down to the letter. They need deep spiritual understanding and real education. And they need to be able to live and move around freely through this world and this nation without carrying the shackles and the burdens of slavery, which will take all of our balls and all of our bravery now so that they won't be fooled, schooled and ruled by more lies and misrepresentation. We can't have our children believing that masked funerals and grieving is normal or formal or wearing a mask fulfills an important task because it doesn't. Covered faces show no expression. They show no love or smiles or warmth or joy or happy or mum's consolation, just sterilisation and sad lonely eyes that cry and nervous worried isolation that then can't see what I saw that security walks hand in hand with peace. I saw that we need all wars to cease and I saw that in Ukraine we need to stop that World War Three runaway train that's being driven by those psychopaths above who've marched us into war after war again and again. We need demilitarization, not their escalation and we need the preservation of life, not more trouble and strife. 
and we need to chill, not kill, with some calm meditation, and we need to do it quickly. Because as I toured around this divided, conquered, and that's what we are, conquered nation, filled with separation and polarization, I saw a light, and I had a realization as I saw the manifestation of their agenda based on confrontation and fragmentation that's shaking us down to the very foundation of our human dignity and decency, for we no longer any offer any salutation to good or sanity or warmth or clean or the propagation of the thought that this world belongs to us, the masses, the ordinary lads and lasses. It belongs to the many and our children, and you may not have any, but hopefully the penny will drop and soon we'll all stop our submission and our capitulation. So in summation, if you want your life back and the old normal, our normal, the normal normal, and you want a future and you want that future to suit you and you no longer want those psychopaths above to boot you, then open up your eyes, rise, reach up and touch the skies. And if you want to be flooded with peace and love and harmony and stimulation for your heart and soul and you want enlightenment to be your goal then start with some quiet contemplation and then remember the millions who've already paid the price who fought and died for this nation's freedoms twice are you going to forget that and all that human sacrifice because if you are then tell me where's your justification and if you want more for your children's endless growing imagination then it's cultivation by an unreal, pretend, Apple, iPhone, Amazon, Google, meta civilization that's not really real, that has no blood or skin or touch or feel, and that gives nothing more than instant, cheap, unfilling gratification that destroys their mind's originality and every scrap, every shred of their concentration, then make some preparation. On their behalf, Shout out loud and make a proclamation and a vow to oppose those now who've slapped such a cheap valuation on our lives and our liberties and the lives of our youth who need lives filled with truth. So go on, make that promise and that stipulation without fear of recrimination from those dark people and forces from above who sh shouted out and barked out their shameful, lying, shaming COVID oration. Tell them, stand up and tell them. That we the people, of the people, by the people of planet Earth, we know our value and we know our worth. And we're not going to put up with any more of your manipulation because we are a living, breathing, caring, sharing, loving, forgiving, civilised, not artificial intelligence or walking around with a chip in our heads, human union and confederation. With 6,000 years or more of growth and gestation, and that we're not going to forget or let those at the top forget or stop the restoration of the old normal, our normal, the normal normal, and the restoration of our hope. I know because I saw it with my own eyes as I toured around that this nation, this world, has stopped rhyming. And it's lost its way and it's lost its flow and it's lost its timing. But I believe in my heart that with our cooperation, we can find the means and the innovation to grasp harmony and grasp emancipation and grasp the idea that we shall overcome all their pain and their fear so that mankind, womankind, be whatever the fuck you want kind, can walk arm in arm with all they hold dear in love and peace, without vexation. So let those bells of ring, freedom ring in this and every nation, now and forever. End of conversation. Hope. Ah, and breathe. Nearly word perfect. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope the things I said resonated on some level. Thank you very much and peace.